Okay, so this uh, is the start of the ad hoc training committee. And uh, I thought we could just start with Yasmin, your updates, and then I can share what Brandon uh, gave me, the info he gave me. So do you wanna start like with the budget status? Were you able to find out anything in that regard? So in regards to the budget, that's still something staff are trying to finalize. I have not received final numbers yet. Okay. Um, so unfortunately we don't have an update on that. I will ask them again this Thursday. By then, it would be two weeks since I brought it up and see if they were able to kind of finalize that piece. Um, and then I also have an update on the Better Impact training. So that training, the presentation is final. It has been finalized by Executive Assistant Conde. Um, the last direction she received uh, from the cabinet is that the they'll move forward with the video. However, um, we're basically, staff is waiting on a, a timeline. So a date when um, we want to roll those out. And from the direction received from the cabinet is that those trainings, the expectation is commissioners begin recording their hours beginning the new fiscal year. So July 1st. So that's what kind of staff has been directed in regards to that specific training. Um, and then I've only received an additional proposal from Sandra, who is uh, again, the consultant who is based in San Diego and um, has been working here for, or has been doing some of this type of work for 30 plus years. Um, and um, I will update their, I'll put their proposal in the folder as well with the other ones. But I just, sorry, I'm rolling through my notes. Yeah, so the, um, it's kind of it's a thirty minute to thirty to sixty minute um, sorry, one second actually. I need okay. a minute um to pull these this information. But okay. That's the only one. I haven't heard back from the other three groups that I um reached out to. That's still pending. I could still report back if I get more information from them. Um, in the next couple of weeks as we move forward through the special topics, but I have not heard back from them. Um, okay. Can, just can we rewind on the budget status? So did, were you able to find out if the FY24 money goes away? Still pending. Um, I did not receive oh, that still pending. either. So okay, both, right. what is the budget for the training committee? That's something that mm -hmm. Danelle and Johnny are gonna work on actually creating and giving us those numbers. And this second piece of um, are we able to use the funds in this fiscal year, even though the trade is going to happen in the future? Um, the immediate reaction, as I mentioned last time, was probably not. Um, but I haven't heard back from Johnny on it. OK. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to make sure. And um, sorry, I'll pull the info from Sandra and uh, give it once you finish your update, if that's okay. Okay. Um, all right, so for implicit bias, you'll have more updates in a week, hopefully. Okay. And then um, also related to implicit bias, Brandon was able to look at the UCLA training that Lupe suggested, as well as the NACO one. And based on that, he thinks the UCLA one is better. The um, NACO one is really more appropriate for law enforcement, he felt. Um, there was also a PBS video that he found that was uh, nine minutes. And it talks about some of the same stuff that the NACO video does. So he was recommending those two things instead of the NACO call for people to do on their own, maybe. Uh, then 
scrolling down on our little action items. He looked at the December 12th minutes and the way it's recorded in the minutes, it says that Brandon moved to have the youth adult partnership one approved, but the uh, conflict resolution center wasn't in his motion that's in the minutes. So I'll, it sounds like maybe that one fell through the cracks, but um, I'm trying to remember, isn't that, is that on our special topics one? Is, is that the free, are you referring to the free one yeah the free one maybe they didn't include it in the motion because it's free and it doesn't require commissioner vote but uh, right that would be my guess but i'm not 100 percent sure okay well maybe we'll just okay i'll just delete that from the special topics where i said it was already approved um because that that was it adds you know, confusion. Okay, so I can delete that out of our action items. I feel like that was done now. Um, and then Brandon and I both looked at the onboarding and the case review for which things are required versus recommended. And, um, and I also got input from Olga on the case review part. And I'm starting to hesitate on calling it required because I remember during the meeting of the full commission, um, I think Gloria said, Commissioner Trans or Chair Trans said that the um, recommended was better. Like there was some, like people might bristle to required. And so, but I understand, I think you're the one, Yasmin, that brought up that it would be good to know what is required. And maybe it's more like what's prioritized. Um, so I'm wondering if we just, inst we just say on each document, everything is recommended and the ones with the asterisk are particularly important or what, what, do, you, what do you all think? Dwayne, do you have a thought on that? Um, Commissioner Dwayne, if you are speaking, you're muted. We can't hear you. I can chime in a little bit. Um, yeah, please. I think uh, I think that's a good like going around it. That way, we're telling people, hey, this is what we as a committee really encourage that you prioritize. Um, if you're able to do all of it, amazing. If not, please prioritize this. I think that will receive less pushback from saying required. Okay. Oh. All right. Cool. I got I got kicked out. I just got back in. I got kicked oh. out of for some reason. I got kicked out. Oh, bummer. So I don't know what I missed. <laughs> I was out. Okay. For a few Oh, okay. I, we were just talking about how um, we were trying. We went through the onboarding list and the case review list, list, both Brandon and myself, and I got input from uh, Chief Investigator Golu on which elements of those two lists, the onboarding and the case review, are like, quote unquote, required. And then after I did all that, and Brandon gave me his input, I remembered that Chair Tran had said that having things required could create a pro create pro problems for people. Like we don't want to discourage people from becoming commissioners because they see all this long list of requirements. Maybe that's like one example. So now I'm thinking the asterisk could just indicate that it's particularly important so that people would know which things they might want to try and do first. And it, it kind of gives the cabinet and staff some guidance in how to roll the training out. So I was asking what you think of that idea rather than calling it required.
Yeah, I mean that's that's fine. I just I don't understand why it would be an issue if it was called required though. I don't I don't see that issue, but Okay. Either way. Okay. I mean there are there are some things that are required of us. There's certain <laughs> training that are required and they're required. Yeah. Okay. And then um then I need, I also wanted some thoughts about the, so Chief Investigator Golub, she went through the case review and she told me which things were the most important. And she was also looking at things that no matter what the case review procedures end up being, the training would still be relevant. But she, in addition, she was looking at what, what of the list is super important. She had two things I mean, she did not have two things that Brandon was arguing should also be important. So my question for you all is, should I add those things? I mean, I think of Chief Investigator Golub as the expert, but Brandon's been doing this for a long time too. Or should I just put asterisk next to it and not, am I overthinking it? Like, <laughs> what do you all think? I guess I should tell you what they are. One is an overview of what Internal Affairs does at San Diego PD. Um, and the other is um, the SDPD use of force um, training that they get. I don't, I disagree with him because that's like how they're trained doesn't matter as much as what their policy is, right? How, how they're trained is very important. It might be important for us to, not for case review as much. I mean, it's important for us in looking at what we might recommend for changes, right? But it's, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, don't, are, yeah. are, I mean, is that saying that we need to, is she saying that we need to, um, view their training as a, as a whole group or or is somebody coming in to s speak to us regarding their training well the way it's listed right now on the case review training academy document that we presented to the full commission already and that was approved by them what it says is or here let me just share my screen why am i making it so hard Okay. Can you see that? Is it big enough? Uh, if you could bigger. zoom in a little bit, that would be helpful. Yeah. yeah I can How's see that it. more? Okay. I can see it. So it's, so it's this one, 2C, that Brandon was saying he thought, and I can look at his, his email that he said, uh, he thinks it's important to know SDPD's specific policies. That is how we can make a determination if an officer follow the department's specific procedures. But I would say this particular one is not about their policies, that their policies are a different training element. So I would say we don't need to elevate this. I mean, it's still recommended. It's still important, but it's not, it's not something to, if you're going to skip anything, please, please, please don't skip it. I don't know. And just to make sure I'm on the same page, this is the one that requires people to go in person to the police training academy, and it's not open to the public, correct? At this point, yes, and unless we do something different. Mm -hmm. um, I personally would agree with Olga's assessment. Just because when we did this training, um, this was actually a piece that they skipped in the training because <laughs> we ran out of time. <laughs> so for me, that indicates like the level of uh, the stimulators specifically. I'm referring about that piece. Um, that kind of indicates the level of importance and that you can still be okay if you don't, if it's not critical. I would say the 
uh, use of force piece, like the policies was helpful. Uh, but again, as you said, this is not focused on that, right? Yes, yeah, somewhere it's in here though. I, I'm Hopefully I'm not making you seasick by scrolling down here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Feel like it's not it's got to be higher okay i'm gonna i'm gonna scroll up super fast so don't look if it makes you sick so here's the use of force spec practices and then oh use of force legal perspective where is the policy That must be where it is. So I guess Brandon's right, because you have to have the policy too. So yeah, I think we have to put it there. Because that would be when the policy would be described too. Is there space to separate those? Like those? I don't know. This this one has already been approved by the full commission. So what do we do if we change it? Because I'm thinking the policy piece could be something that could be done in an open session. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be the required. And the simulate the simulators piece is the one that would require commissioners to go into the academy. And uh, to me, that doesn't feel required. All right. Um, I'm going to say, uh, I want to say something about, um, if possible, uh, include, I want to say, make this an open meeting if possible. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My only concern is I think some of the simulators are like physically located in that building. Mm -hmm. So maybe do another kind of a different type of training, right? Like instead of the simulators, remember, do you remember there was a discussion at one of the full commission meetings about trainings that are done like at a different location that, what was it? I feel like, was it a, a comment from the community? Was it like um, Ms. Maxwell or uh, Ms. St. Julian that suggested something? Um, if it's a recent comment, I it might have been Ms. Maxwell who suggested that the trainings go into the community uh, or some of the meetings are hosted in the, in the community. This was one where apparently in the past, community members that are curious about how police are trained on a certain topic, or whatever, are invited to go to this community location or something. I'm sorry, I'm not remembering the details of it. Uh, does that ringing a bell, Dwayne, anything? Because I think this one is even more important to be open to the public of all the topics. Oh, maybe that's why it says four simulators, community focused experience. It's already there. It's already oh, there, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's okay. All right. I feel better about that now. Community focused. Then number eight, he suggested, which is about uh, internal affairs, having that be that it's important when you are doing case review, especially to know what, what the internal affairs process is. And I've actually kind of been curious about that. 
because I didn't think when we visited San Diego PD, I got a very clear sense of what their whole process is. I agree. I don't, um, I don't I have, we haven't received this. I'm wondering if, um, I know uh, part of me is thinking once we have investigative, uh, like, uh, the ability to do our own investigations, how relevant will this continue to be? I know we'll continue to do case review, but I feel like, um, this might change a little bit because then we're going to start doing our investigations and we have a different process for that. But maybe that's a question that we need to revisit in the future once that actually happens. I think so. Yeah. Cause none of like this training, even though I'm like, Oh my God, we already proved it. It's still something that, that can change over time. It's not like rock hard rules. Okay. Um, right, then I can stop sharing. Final note, it's been almost, what, how many months for you all? Eight months? <laughs> Maybe? Um, yeah. I guess, oh, to Olga's point, if it was required, you would have needed this long time ago. Um, right. So maybe it's good to have, but it's not required. I know we're not using the word required, but. Right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um just highly important. I think so. Okay. To say that they're highly recommended. Okay. Uh, okay. Then the, the next thing that was kind of on our list to talk about, I don't think we could, it was about the, the, um, videos for people to do on their own, the NACL ethics and decorum, and then the witness reliability ones. And, I'm wondering if now it's a good idea to um, I don't know maybe wait until we have more people or or reach reach out to I mean maybe it's the time to ask the cabinet you know we have these two um, the witness reliability and the Nichols ethics and decorum are on the previous proof list. And there are things that commissioners can do on their own time as they have time. And what does the cabinet want to have done? Or, or is it better for us to phrase it as a recommendation from this committee? We think these two things need to be, or do we do it in our, our next, when we're on the agenda again? I'll let Commissioner Twain chime in for What do you think about that, Dwayne? Do we lose him again? You are muted if you are speaking, Commissioner. Uh, maybe his Wi-Fi connection is poor. Uh, no, 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 no. There we go. You didn't lose me. I just, I have to uh, take care of my mother. She just did something that I got to, I got to, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to go. I gotta deal with the uh, okay with my mother. She just did something that I gotta deal with. Okay, all right. Thanks for letting us know. Okay. Hang in there. All right. Okay. Sorry. No, I totally understand. Don't even mm -hmm. worry about it. Okay. Thanks for trying to be with us. All right. Okay. All right, with that, I guess maybe we should, um, I don't know if we should stop, um, Yasmin, or maybe there was just one other thing I was going to ask you for um, an update on.
because it, it's fine if I just put the updates in the action items and we talk more next time, right? Yeah. Uh, that re on our special topics, we had rebuilding community government relationship and trust. And there was the question about, was there anything raised at the community forum in March that needs to be incorporated into those, uh, the purpose and the objective for that? And I told you I will work on looking at those notes and I did not, apologies. Okay, okay, um, so we'll keep that as an action item then, okay. Check on rebuilding community. I'm adding that to my to-do list for the week. Um, I do have a couple of additional things that okay. uh, I can kind of report out. Um, in regards to, remember I mentioned that we use success factors for trainings. Um, mm -hmm. and whether we can use that for the commissioners. Um, Danelle was able to share with me who's the project lead on that specific training uh, page or platform in the city. Um, and I'm going to connect with them, uh, like have a meeting with them and explain what are the options that we have for commissioners. So hopefully I'm able to report back on that next week. Um, okay. And then... Uh, one thing that we I would recommend in coming kind of from staff as a whole, because we have such a busy calendar in the next few months um, and kind of uh, it has it been clear on what is the expectations of when the trainings would roll out, when the smaller ones would happen, etc. Um, we would recommend that. Uh, you and, and uh, Brandon maybe schedule time to check in with the cabinet on what's on there and what's happening the next few months from you all's and how do you envision the trainings rolling out and making sure the expectations are aligned and the timeline is aligned. Um, and that also gives an opportunity for staff like myself and Olga or Duane who need to prepare for specific trainings that will give us like this training is going to happen during this time. So I, we need to be prepared. The materials need to be prepared, uh, reach out to people, et cetera. So okay. That. All right. Yeah, I can, I can do that. I can reach out to them. Just get that conversation started. Yes. I think that would be great. Um, and I, you know, I think also we're in this situation because we don't have a permanent executive director too. I think yes. I've been thinking about that a lot. So we're we're trying to have progress and it's kind of hard with I mean we have a leader but it's it's different, you know, when it's an interim leader. Yeah, and literally in the next few months what we have a new ED come in, we have the pursuits pretext hearings, um we have the new fiscal year, new commissioner. So there's so much happening that mm -hmm. The, the calendar is really so packed, so it would be helpful to know, hey, actually, we're going to make sure there's th these Saturdays or these times are for the training committee and you all can move these forward. So I think if everyone can be on the same page on that, that would be great. Um, and again, staff is happy and comfortable doing a lot of the heavy lifting um, eventually. We definitely envision that happening. Um, and yeah, I think that's the one thing I wanted to bring up that kind of came up in our staff conversation today. Um, okay, good. Just so we know, like, when do we need to start preparing those presentations, this material, etc. cetera. Okay. Um, the stuff you put in the chat. Oh, yes. That's, um, is that related to... Um, Explicit bias. Let me read that out. Sorry. Um, so okay. go ahead. No, I just, I, I'm kind of just using my little action items file just to kind of keep everything in one place. So talk away. I'll try and type at the same okay, time. Okay, great. I put it in the chat to remember to report it out to the, for the recording. Okay. I forgot. Thank you for mentioning that. So on uh, going back to Sandra's proposal, again, uh, the San Diego based a facilitator that does implicit bias training, um, an in-person facilitation of one 90-minute program. Um, 
is 6,500. And then if we want to work with her directly to prepare scenarios and case studies specific to police oversight and like our commission, that's an additional $500. And then if we want to do in-person follow-up, like um, um, if commissioners have additional questions, similar to the one-on-one -on -one conversations or hours that were in other proposals, that's $1,000. Okay. The total about, about um, $8,000 for um, three hours of kind of time with us approximately. I was trying to look for the- Wait, how does that add up to three hours? I got 90 minutes. And then is the in-person 90 minutes too? It's not, but I'm guessing that one in the prep of scenarios will be about um, 90 minutes together, but it, she didn't give a specific time. Mm. I'll look into the proposal. Her proposal was a little bit difficult to understand, to be honest. Um, mm. so I'll spend a little bit more time looking at it and, um, but, uh, from estimation, it would probably look similar like that uh, to that. Cause what it cause you made that table already. So it'd be I'm nice if it was apples it. is you can't find it. You know, where I, put it? I was trying to look for did it. Did you put it in my, did you put it in our, uh, our training folder? I thought I did, and then I was just looking, and maybe I looked at the wrong thing. I'll look again. Sorry. I was trying to look for it oh. um, to add it there, and I couldn't find the table. Hmm. Let's see. I just looked in the proposals. When I, yeah, I don't see it. I'm not huh. sure. Maybe it was my own drive. Mm. But I don't, I thought I put it in a sharing. Oh, look, I think I found it. Where was it? No, no, didn't find that. Something yeah, I else. only see the CPP training academy status as an Excel sheet. Unless that. That Excel sheet is the one I made that has all the huh. people's names and every kind of with the dates people do training, if that's helpful. I don't even know if it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll find it. And if I don't, I'll replicate it and I'll send it via email. Um, oh, did you send it via email before? Could I have it as an attachment? I don't think so. Oh, you just showed it? Yeah, yeah I think, I thought I put it in the folder and I shared screen on it. Oh, um, okay. Unless it was an Excel sheet. I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I should have had that up before, but I, I had a difficult time finding it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all. No, I just did a quick search. Couldn't find it. All right. Okay. So let me look through my list again. So I guess one thing when, as you're putting together the implicit bias training, um, before we share that with the full commission again, it would be good to um, have a way to articulate how like why it's important to do and what value is added by doing these things that cost money. Um, so what do we need beyond what we can get free from UCLA and the KPBS videos? So those two things are free that people can do on their own that take very little time. And so we need some way to articulate why, what's deficient, you know, in the free things. I don't know if you have thoughts about that. Uh, a few, I think. Part of me is like, oh, I wish we can see the training that the race in the Office of Race and Equity has created so we can actually compare like what are people able to gain out of similar trainings. 
But I'm thinking the hands-on scenarios piece, that is definitely different from what people can watch. So that's one piece we can uh, articulate. Um, and, and, the I power, and the power of how that raises awareness more than just, because you can watch a video and be like, oh yeah, that doesn't apply to me, right? Yes. But when you're doing something hands-on, it really becomes clear. Yes. And I'm also thinking by inviting an expert, people will really have the opportunity to, even if they watched the videos and had questions, for example, or something didn't fully sink in, they'll be able to explore um, these topics further with an expert in person. So let's say someone started like this is their first time introduction to implicit bias and the first time they're hearing some terminology, they might not get a lot of the information from the first time. So by having an in-person mm -hmm. really emphasize what are these issues we're talking about, how does it show up in the real, real world, or even in like police oversight work, um, that's where it could really sink in. Okay. Okay. So maybe with that comparison table thing, maybe at the top kind of have like that little, little summary of why it's important. I think that would be helpful. Yes. Okay. And just to make sure I capture next steps from, from my end, um, mm -hmm. if we have an update, budget update, I will follow up and the weather funds can be used. So I'll flag this again to see um, success factors update. And I may not have all these updates by next week, just because it depends on other people. Mm -hmm. um, For sure, I get it. And then implicit bias, if I'm able to meet with anyone else, and get additional proposals and, and then just have the just have that table of what you know still yes yeah and then you said the community um on the um the special topics document it's called rebuilding community government relationship trust and it's the one with um oh, sure. exhaling yeah yeah that one did anything from the forum come up to change the description for this, right? Yeah, the objectives, the purpose and the objective, right? Purpose and objective. Okay, great. Cool. Anything else as next steps that I didn't capture? No, you've got everything. The one thing I don't have in my little action items document is the success factors thing. Now tell me again, which, what topics would the six, was that? So success factors is the, it's okay. It's the platform where city staff conduct most of their trainings that's required. So we receive a notification that you have a training that's required. We log into success factors, complete the training there, and it, it triggers um, an audit, like a, a check that we've completed this training on our profile. So mm -hmm. one thought was, and, and this is something that maybe we can have a conversation about um, when there's a larger uh, group, but... One of the thoughts was, what if we're able to use that platform for the commissioners and we upload all the videos and required and trainings in there? That way we can track via that platform um, and we can automatically assign new commissioner trainings as they're coming in. So we, as staff, we've never used that platform in that way, so we're not sure. But I'm going to meet with the person who's in charge of that platform to ask what are the options for us. 
Okay, that's right. And now I'm remembering, and we were um, we were talking about how when the trainings are done in person, mm -hmm. that they're open to the community, the community can come. But then if uh, commissioners are doing trainings that were in person that got recorded or whatever, and they don't require some interaction, that then it could be done through success factors. Correct. Right? Yeah. Okay. Got you. Thank yeah. you for that. No problem. And one thing we can think about is moving forward, even if success factors is an option, do we want to continue with the, um, the Excel sheet you've created as the tracking system and we just upload the ones that are, we're able to upload online um, on YouTube? and keep it open that way? Or do we want to use success factors as an internal um, way of mm -hmm. tracking? So that's a conversation mm -hmm. in the future. If the committee can have, that would be helpful. Um, and then I had one last thing. I'm trying to remember where. I wrote it and then I can't find it. Sorry, I'm trying to find my last note. Okay. Mm, I forgot. It's okay. Okay. All right, cool. I put the success factors note with my little spreadsheet note because it would it'd probably be one or the other, I'm guessing, but I don't know. You don't want you don't want to overdo the documentation, right? Yes. And we also don't want to duplicate the work of, of doing it twice. So ideally we yeah. can one and stick with it. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. So we've made progress tonight. That was good. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. I will I will see you Wednesday. Yes. I'm like Wednesday. Yes, I will see you Wednesday. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Bye.